Enjoy the convenience of seven days a week banking and extended hours with Cube from First Arkansas Bank and Trust, member FDIC. It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Shap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. Blackman Auctions. For over 80 years, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top quality hospitality assets. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Shap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Shap. Cameron Smith of Australia is the champion golfer of the year after a masterful final round 64, eight under par at the old course in St. Andrews, Scotland to win the 150th Open Championship. Smith used a five-hole birdie stretch on holes 10 through 14 to vault up the leaderboard and after a par on 15 and 16, then a clutch up and down on 17 around the rolled hole bunker He birdies 18 to finish at minus 20 for the championship. He notched his first major win as a professional. Earlier this year, you might remember, he won the Players' Championship at TPC Sawgrass. Some call that the fifth major. Well, this is his first major, and it comes in Scotland at the home of golf, the old course at St. Andrews. Cameron Young finished second followed by Roy McIlroy in third, Tommy Fleetwood and Victor Hovland tied for fourth. Coming up on this edition of From the Short Grass, I sit down with one of the top girls junior golfers in the state of Arkansas, Anna Kate Nichols. Her father, Joey, was an outstanding junior golfer, and AK says she has big plans for her future, and you will get to hear all about them after the break. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Find Blackman Auctions on the web at blackmanauctions.com to see their full lineup of auctions that are coming up. And as we've always said, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. With all the decisions you need to make about what to do in El Dorado, finding a place to stay is an easy one. The Haywood is uniquely positioned to make your stay one to treasure. Located in the historic Union Square district of El Dorado, the Haywood offers luxurious accommodations that feature contemporary, colorful rooms with high-quality bedding. Comfortable baths with walk-in showers and a spacious workspace with stylish plantation shutters that are unique additions to the stunning decor in a non-smoking environment. Make the Haywood your home Home away from home the next time you visit El Dorado. This is Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. The economy is changing slowly but surely. The market is slowing down in a gradual slide. Not an emergency yet, the sky is not falling, but a change is coming. When times are good, auctions make buyers compete to buy at the highest market value. When the economy gets tough, auctions force buyers to make a purchase decision. Either way, auctions get the highest return for a seller and a strong deal for a buyer. With an experienced auction company, it's a simple process. Go to BlackmanAuctions.com for more information. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Strength is measured not by the number of accounts. Strength is placing value on relationships. It's having the vision and the guts to invest in growth. It's the commitment to responsibly manage your money. At Stevens, we believe that our strengths build success. Not only for us, but for our clients. Stevens, member NYSE, SIPC. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. I am Trey Schapp. Now on the tee, Anna Kate Nichols. Anna Kate Nichols, welcome to this edition of From the Short Grass. Thanks for joining me. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. When did you first pick up a golf club do you remember were you old enough to remember no like honestly I don't remember at all like I remember going out there when I was probably two three I don't even know when I could start when I basically when I could walk he was like I would go out there sit in the cart maybe try to hit a couple balls you know sit over there go get a snack and watch him and then 
but I really started like really getting into it when I was like 10. But before that, I would just go out there and hit on the range and just, you know, just what basically every kid, little kid does. Try to follow in their, their father's footsteps. Yeah, wasn't doing too well when I was younger. <laughs> well, it takes time to develop uh, a talent and specifically one for golf. And I guess that, I mean, you basically love the game now, don't you? Yeah, I could not see myself doing any other any other sport, really, honestly. When you look at golf and you playing it, what draws you to it? I don't know. I'm super competitive, and I honestly, when I look at golf, I'm like, it takes a lot of patience, and I have no patience, so I really don't know how it works for me, but I don't know, just the competitive factor of it, and then I'm like, I just know that I have a God-given talent, and I'm like, you take advantage of it, because I mean, I've <laughs> tried pretty much every other sport, and I have not been really not really been that good at it so I'm like golf is definitely the one you play basketball at Pulaski Academy but you're also a member of obviously the golf team any other sports that you play or have tried um well I did gymnastics competitive gymnastics so I was like 10 and that was pretty much all I did and then I played volleyball soccer and then yeah basketball and then golf so done a lot you are in here right now right after playing in a junior golf tournament and you still have your golf shoes on (laughs) You don't have tennis shoes to put on or something after you play golf? Hey, I brought some other shoes. I just didn't put them on. I, <laughs> I didn't change my shoes. I just got in my car and came. I was going to say, did you get a bite to eat after the <laughs> yes, round? Yes, I did. Okay, good, good. When it comes to golf, and it takes a lot of time, mm-hmm. do you like to practice? Do you like to spend the time at the range or a short game facility or a putting green to work on the game? Yeah, I I really do enjoy practicing. Like I know when I like I, when I was younger, you know, I would kind of be like, I would I didn't enjoy it as much, and I would be kind of like, oh, this is kind of boring after a while. But you know, when you go and play in all these tournaments and you play against you know really good competition, you see kind of what you need to work on and everything, and it kind of motivates you to go out there and practice with the purpose. Because I know I used to go out there and just hit a million balls on the range and then go play or whatever. But you know, you save the most of your shots, you know. And with your short game and chipping and putting, and I've put a lot of emphasis on that in the last um, probably year or two, and it's it's really transformed my game, honestly. What's the best part of your game? Um, I would say probably my ball striking right now, but um, my chipping and putting is definitely catching up to that, So, which is good. You travel a lot to play, mm-hmm. Ellie. You play around the state, but you also play in some of the, the national tournaments as well. Do you like traveling a lot and playing throughout the summer? Oh, I love playing, like, going everywhere and playing, you know, because you get to play different courses, different types of grass, different greens, you know, you get to meet a bunch of different people. Like, I know that when I started playing all these national tournaments, I've met people from all over the country that I'm really good friends with now, so it's it's really good. I like to kind of go all over. And you said you were competitive. What's the what's the competition levels like? If you can give me the ASGA level and then obviously, I guess, going to the nationals, the national level, it kind of takes the competition up a notch. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, all these um, like the AJGAs that I play in, the competition and all those is just always super good. And you know that you always have to play super well and whatever to to get a good finish, obviously. And, you know, it's just it's really good playing against the good competition because you, you need to challenge yourself and push yourself to get better so let's go back to when you were young your dad did not force you out to the golf course did he no I always well maybe when I was younger and I don't remember maybe he would take me out there but or be like hey come out here with me but um I know when I actually started really getting into it it was never it was never forced it was always just hey want to go out here and I'd be like sure so we'd go and now I you know there for a while he'd be like hey you know come out here with me and but now I just I go out on my own and I'm like hey dad you want to come out here and play with me and I'm like so it's 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 good. Can you beat him? Yeah, we we have good matches, but yes, I can now, which is good. It's exciting. <laughs> I couldn't up until like a couple months ago. So, do you know? Have you studied up on your father? Do you know how good he was back in the day? Yes, and still is to this day. Yes, and I always tell people this, like when we like we're playing these in these tournaments, and I'm like, he got to play in all these really really cool tournaments when I was younger, and I wasn't really into golf, and so it was like. That was, um, oh my gosh, like I wish I was this age now whenever he was playing and all that because it was so cool. And then maybe you'd caddy for him. Yeah, and it was, that was really fun, um, getting to caddy for him at the U.S. Mid-Am, which was awesome. But just getting to experience him playing in a USGA event was really cool. You look forward to playing in some of those? Yes, I've tried to qualify for a couple of them now and come up just a little short, but I know I'll get my chance at some point. So, Do you look up to any professional players now, and if so, who are they? 
Um, obviously, you know, Tiger Woods, but I would say right now my favorite or my my golf most golfer that I look up to the most is probably Justin Thomas. Um, just because his ball striking is so good, you know, he keeps pretty much keeps a good attitude all the time. He can hit all kinds of different shots, which is which is cool. I mean, you can watch him on TV hit like little low shots, the high shots, shots around trees. It's it's good. Do you have to, or do you try to go out to the range sometimes and mimic what you see from others? Yeah, I definitely like, I know t- from taking all my lessons and everything, Patrick's like, you've got to learn how to hit other shots. Like, you've got to be able to work the ball both ways. So, you know, I go down to the range and I'm like, you know, try to hit cuts, try to hit draws, hit the low, the high, you know, everything. You just got to work on all that. I know when I was growing up that my parents would drop me off at Rebsman Golf Course, my mom, on a Tuesday morning or a Thursday morning. On Monday and Wednesday, I got to play Fair Park, the War Memorial course that is no more. Thank you, Frank Scott. But when you are around it as much as you are, and you're out there, I would assume, every day of the week playing at some point, do you ever get tired of it? Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, there's definitely points where I play, you know, I'm just constantly playing and playing and playing, and I'm like, you know, I need a little break, or I need, like, maybe a day or two off, but I'm kind of one of those people that, like, if I go, like, a couple days without practicing, I'm like, I got to go out to the course. (laughs) So, no, I don't don't normally get tired of it. I was playing with a friend a couple of uh, weeks ago out at Pleasant Valley, and you two didn't see me. Your, Your dad's in here while we're doing this interview. You two didn't see me, but I saw you. You were in the driver's seat. He was in the passenger seat, and y'all were zooming through the parking lot of Pleasant Valley. Do you always drive, or do you let him drive sometimes? Um, well, since I started driving, I, I like to drive, but he tells me my driving's bad. So I just, you know, I let him drive when we play because it's a lot of complaining if I'm driving. He's like, oh, gosh, you're going too fast or whatever. So I just let him drive. He's just trying. That's the typical father <laughs> trying to make sure that the daughter is, is doing everything proper. Doesn't want to get you hurt. I mean, come on. you got a bright future ahead of yourself. I know. But I don't think my driving's that bad. <laughs> <laughs> good point good point when you look to the future and golf being a part of your life do you see it being a part of your life forever definitely you know I'm obviously wanting to play in college I'm not sure where that's going to be just yet but um, I'm really excited and then hopefully you know maybe play professionally and then golf is just one of those sports that you can play you know pretty much all your life and so that's also really that's a bonus um but yeah, I do plan on playing my whole life. Let's look at college real quick. Are there institutions that are already contacting you and trying to get you to come and be on their team? Um, well, I've had some calls with some coaches, but and um, I have a couple of visits set up, but nothing too set in stone yet. But um, I'm just I'm super excited about the whole process. It's going well so far. So that's yeah, it's gonna be good. Potentially, you might stay in state. Maybe we'll see. What do you think about the Arkansas program and and what Shauna? Taylor has built in Fayetteville. Oh, I I, I love Coach Sean and Coach Mike. They're amazing. I've been to their camp a couple times, and you know, just they have just built such a good program. Super competitive, and just I mean, they're they're always good. And you know, the blessings obviously has some of the best practice facilities in the country. And you know, I'm just a big Razorback fan. So, if not Arkansas, what do you want to do in college? What would you like to major in? If you haven't made that decision, I understand, but. Have you looked at what you might want to major in, and would that decide where you end up possibly going? Um, I don't exactly know where I want to play or what I want to do yet in school. Um, I kind of go back and forth. Like, I did want to be a doctor for a little bit, but I'm like, mm, no, that's probably not going to work. So, um, and I also kind of, I'm like, I like interior design, but I don't know, maybe. And then I may just do business, but I don't know. I don't know what's kind of, I haven't really looked at schools and all the majors and stuff yet so we'll see any players on the lpga tour that you kind of look up to and and try to pattern your game after um definitely the quarter sisters uh nelly and jessica they're awesome they are super consistent and you know they just they very good ball strikers good putters and yeah when you play in these ajga events college coaches around spectators around do you ever get nervous um, not really. I mean, I'm a little always nervous on the first tee box, but that normally goes away. Um, but you just kind of, I just kind of block it out and just act like there's nobody there, nobody watching. And, you know, I normally do better when I'm just in my own little headspace. Is there anything you do before you get to the first tee box to try and calm your nerves a little bit? Well, I have a very specific, um, 
practice routine before I tee off. He can he can tell you that. Um, I get there like an hour and a half early. I do the same thing every every time before I play. I eat like at the same time. Like af- I eat after the third hole. I can't eat before the round. And I just yeah, there's a very specific way I do things. And I think that if I didn't do it that way, I would it would not. My nerves would be a lot. What do you eat? Is is it a banana? Is it a sandwich? Um, a little normally, snack? Normally, normally I like Uncrustables or um, good Cliff, choice or Cliff Bars. Yeah, yeah, those are good and some fruit. The Uncrustables are they're spot on. Yeah, for those out there so that good. have not tried an Uncrustable yet, you don't know what you're missing, right? Yeah, those are my also my go-to golf course snack. You know, every day I'll go get an Uncrustable from the from the snack shack. So, your pre-shot routine or your warm-up routine, what does it consist of? Um, so I'll get there and normally I'll go to the putting green, um, normally hit, I'll hit shorter putts, uh, work on like, you know, just six feet, eight feet in, and then I'll go to the range, go through basically my whole bag and then, um, just hit a couple shots with each club and then, um, go back to the putting green, uh, putt a little bit, chip a little bit and then head to the first tee. If there are young girls out there that are looking up to you, what would you tell them about? golf and trying to stay involved with it yeah just I know that it's it's easy to get you know golf's one of those sports that's so it's so frustrating because you know it's it's hard it's so it's such a hard sport and just to like I would tell people to just not get discouraged and just kind of like it's it'll work out you just just practice stay with it don't don't give up on it because it I promise it it gets better Um, I was there at one point you know just it gets better you remember your good rounds. Do you remember the bad rounds too? Some of the really bad ones. I I remember like certain shots from those rounds, like that are just so terrible. But but yeah, so they some of them stick with me. But I try to forget those. When you play around the state, obviously there's there's a group of of young girls that play in almost every tournament. Mm-hmm. You become friends with them, and it's kind of like a, a traveling, I would say a traveling circus, but mm-hmm. it's not a circus. <laughs> it's it's a traveling group, is it not? And you become friends with yeah, everybody? Yeah, we have um, a couple, there's like probably four or five of us who are really good friends, and we all played together last year in the uh, Southern Cup, which is was really fun. And, you know, we got a lot closer then, too. And then there's also a lot of guys, like the same, pretty much like the same guys and girls go to all the ASGA tournaments. So it's super fun because you get to hang out with them and, Talk to everyone, so it's good. And then, what about the national tournaments? Do you have a group there that you kind of know that you see at each individual national tournament? Um, those are just a little different, just because you know you get a different. I mean, it's like a different group of people at every tournament, pretty much. Like there'll be a couple guys, a couple girls I know at every tournament. Normally, one girl I know pretty well, and or one or two girls. But yeah, less people there than obviously in the state. But is there a tournament you want to win the most? Um, yeah, I definitely have a lot of tournaments, but, um, you know, I really, I really do want to qualify for U.S. Junior Girls, and it'd be obviously really cool to win one of those, one of those tournaments, and I don't know, I just kind of take it tournament by tournament and just, yeah. Is there a favorite course that you've played around the state in tournament play? Um, let's see, in tournament play, ooh, I don't know, probably the Blessings. Um, I played there last year at the Stacey Lewis, and I really liked that course. Um, I actually got in the tournament like the night before, so we had to rush out there and play a practice round. But um, that was just an awesome course. It was super good shape, and it exposes your short game. I'll tell you that. <laughs> what does Stacey Lewis mean to women's golf? She's such a such an influencer in women's golf, and you know, just being able like there's not very many women that you know she makes an effort to like host these junior tournaments and keep juniors and especially junior girls involved in the game of golf and it's it's awesome and she made such an impact at obviously University of Arkansas and it's yeah it's great she's super involved and now her husband coaches and yeah it's great when your father and I were growing up it wasn't cool to play golf it was (laughs) kind of like you're considered a dork if you go out there and play golf it's cool now to tell someone yeah I play golf isn't it yeah, I know. Like it's it's weird because I'm like the only girl that like really plays golf at um, PA, but um, it's I think it's cool. I mean, all my friends, you know, they're all kind of. At first, I was just like, oh, gonna golf, and then I was like, I picked it up and I was like, I'm good at this, and then I was like, you know, it's it's cool. Like I'm the only one that plays golf really at the school or whatever, and and um, it's cool. And every all my friends, family, everybody supports it, and it's great. So. What's it like walking down the hallways of PA and <laughs> people are like, hey, there's go there goes AK. Yep, she probably won another tournament this weekend. Oh, it's fun for sure. And then like I'll 
this is like I'll go to my tournaments and all my teachers they're super lenient about me leaving and everything and all these like national tournaments I'll go to they'll think it's like high school golf so they'll be like oh yeah good luck you can leave I'll send you all your work and I'm like I kind of get the free pass sometimes it's that good. helps yeah. yeah that's awesome <laughs> you never have felt pressure though being a Nichols to play the game no, he has never put pressure on me, and I, I love that, and I think it's awesome because I've seen, I've gone to these tournaments, and I've seen these parents that have just put so much pressure on their kids, and, like, I've played with a bunch of them, and the, kind of the stuff that they say during rounds is just like, oh, gosh, that's, that's yeah, my dad is not like that, and um, but, yeah, he's great. He doesn't push me or anything like that, so. Does he take you to most of the tournaments, or is it kind of a, a mix, dad and mom? Um, well, during the summer, my mom can't go to as many, so he'll normally take me. But during the ones during the school year, and then it kind of just depends on the tournament, how long it is, obviously how far. Um, but my mom, she loves to come to all of them if she can, but there's some that she can't, and I completely understand. So Okay, I asked you your favorite course around the state to play in a tournament. What's your favorite tournament to play? Ooh, I don't know. Um, should I do a p- favorite one I've played? Sure. Ooh, I don't know. I really liked, okay, so the Bubba Conley in Memphis, love that tournament. Um, it's it's just such a good tournament. It's a, obviously a big national tournament. And um, I also really like, I played in one at Stanford in January, and I loved that tournament, loved the course. It was also an all-girls tournament, which is cool because there's not that many of those every year. So it was good. That's pretty neat. All yeah. right. The best course you've ever played or your f- most favorite course you've ever played can be anywhere okay um i've played a lotion and i would say that's probably my favorite course i also got to caddy out there in the palmer cup so that was really cool but getting to play it was was pretty awesome being a caddy in the palmer cup at Mm -hmm. a lotion did that inspire you even a little bit more to try and make that team once you become a collegiate golfer yeah it it was such a it was a really cool experience and it's obviously like such a once in a lifetime thing but um getting to caddy for obviously a razorback was was really cool and you know they it's boy girl pairings uh i think most of the tournament Mm -hmm. and so you know just like I would be carrying her yardage book, and she'd be like, "Be like, how far?" And I'd shoot the yardage, and she'd be like, "Okay, but like, tell me all this stuff or whatever." But yeah, it was cool, and it's it's obviously back then I was like, you know, this would be something really really cool to play in, and you know, I don't know if it'll ever come back to a lotion, but that would be awesome if it did in my college career because that would be a really really cool to get to play um, in your home state. What does a golf coach need to do to get AK <laughs> to be a member of their team? Um. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so all the coaches that I've talked to so far have been super nice, super great. Um, I don't know, more just like uh, how well I fit in with the team, the how far it is from home, the obviously the academic side of things too, because you know you have to go to school, sadly. Um, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> um, but yeah, just kind of just all the factors of just the team and everything, because um, there's a lot of schools that you're like, oh, I'm kind of interested in that, and then you kind of, you would meet the team and you're like, oh, maybe that's not the right fit. So, um, yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Fantasy foursome, living or deceased, three other golfers that you would like to play around a golf with. Oh, um, definitely Tiger, JT, and probably Arnold Palmer or Bill Zalatoris. Two difference. Two uh, different yeah, I was going to say, okay. It's a little different, but... I don't know. Why Why Will Zalatoris? I don't know. Well, I've grown to be a fan of him in the past, like, year and year and a half. Um, just he's super young, super good. Like, I mean, the way he handles himself during majors, like, he's obviously one of the younger guys on tour, and he's managing to finish super high in, like, every single major he's played in. So it's pretty. The way he reacted to losing the mm-hmm. U.S. Open this year, to Matt Fitzpatrick, he went up to Matt Fitzpatrick's parents and said, hey, look, if I had to lose to anybody, I'm glad it was your son. That tells you a lot about his character, doesn't it? Yeah, just his sportsmanship and everything, because obviously nobody wants to miss the last putt on the last hole to force a playoff. Did you think it was in? I did, and I did not think that Fitzpatrick was going to make par from there, but um, that was a great bunker shot he hit. Do you watch a lot of golf, too? I do. Um, I watch... All pretty much all the majors, and then some. I mean, I'll sit down some afternoons, like Saturday, Sunday afternoons, and watch some of the PGA, LPGA stuff. But um, and obviously, I like watching all the college stuff when it's on in the fall. So yeah, I love watching golf. Thanks so much for coming in, and um, best of luck in your future endeavors. And tell us where you end up. 
I'm sure we'll be able to find it. But when you end up somewhere, maybe we'll get you back on and talk about that and possibly one day an LPGA tour yes. card as Perfect. well. Perfect. Thanks for having me. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Yes. Awesome. AK, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That interview with AK was recorded last week in the middle of her competing in the Randy Beaver Memorial Junior Golf Tournament at Rolling Hills Country Club in Cabot. She was in the studio and had just shot a 70. Yes, a 70. She followed that up with a 69 and took home first place in the girls' division of the Randy Beaver Memorial Junior Golf Tournament there at Rolling Hills. Congratulations, AK, on the win. And I'm sure it is one of just many that are upcoming. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels, one of our great sponsors of From the Short Grass. Hey, the ASGA match play is coming up down in El Dorado. If you need a place to stay, if you're competing in the match play, you need a place to stay, call my friends at the Haywood, make a reservation, tell them you heard it on From the Short Grass. You might get a little discount in it. Never know. Always good to ask. Doesn't hurt to ask. We'll be back with our rules segment with PGA Mass Professional Adam Carney after this. This is Thomas Blackman of Blackman Auctions. You all know by now I'm not a good golfer, but my son loves the game and he and I have been playing more. I've got my score down to, uh, I've quit playing a scramble on every hole. I'm using the bunker rake much less than I used to, and a lot of the time I hit my drives past the women's tee box. All of my success in golf can directly be tied to me listening to From the Short Grass. Without it, I would not be the golfer I am today. Trey, you owe me 20 bucks for that. Trey knows golf, I know auctions. Come see us at BlackmanAuctions.com. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. With all the decisions you need to make about what to do in El Dorado, finding a place to stay is an easy one. The Haywood is uniquely positioned to make your stay one to treasure. Located in the historic Union Square district of El Dorado, the Haywood offers luxurious accommodations that feature contemporary, colorful rooms with high-quality bedding. Comfortable baths with walk-in showers and a spacious workspace with stylish plantation shutters that are unique additions to the stunning decor in a non-smoking environment. Make the Haywood your home away from home the next time you visit El Dorado. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. On the tee with our rules segment, here's PGA Master Professional Adam Carney. Adam, this comes in from Jason in Rogers. He says, my ball was on the side of a water hazard, which is now a penalty area. What are my options to play the shot? Well, you've, you've got all kinds of options, but, you know, a lot of you know, what you're going to do is going to be determined on is the golf ball within the penalty area. I don't, the question doesn't ask that specifically, but, um, you know, let's just assume it is. Mm -hmm. um, well, it doesn't matter either way. Can he stand in the water and hit the shot, you know, a ball that is, you know, either inside or outside the penalty area but playable? Absolutely. And I've done it. I'll go in there. If the ball's dry and I can advance it, I'm, I'm going to do it. Hitting it out of the water, I've made some poor decisions in that respect, but – you know, the the options are, are pretty much endless. Um, if the ball is within the penalty area, you obviously have the option of, uh, you know, saying, okay, I can't play this ball. I'm just going to proceed under the, you know, relief from a penalty area. Not relief, but, you know, t taking my one-stroke penalty. If it's, you know, a, la a red penalty area, um, you know, use my two club blanks or whatever. But the bottom line is can you stand in a penalty area and uh, play a ball that's in or outside the hazard, the answer is yes. So the same would hold true for a ball that's in bounds, but you have to stand out of bounds to play it. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can stand out of bounds and play a ball that's in bounds, no question. And the other thing, too, is now with penalty areas is, yes, you can ground your club. Mm -hmm. And so if you're walking into something and you need to brace yourself, you're allowed to do that. Sure. And that's that's actually always been in the rules. You could lay your clubs down in the penalty yeah, area if sure. you wanted to. Right, exactly. If you used a club, I mean, it was it was in the old rule book and in, in, in decisions book in a penalty area. In that time, let's just say, use the old vernacular since we're we're talking about the old a rules. hazard, a water hazard. Sure, you could use a club to prevent you from falling. Um, absolutely no problem with that whatsoever it's always been okay so yeah you i mean there's nothing wrong there's no prohibition against using the club to steady yourself as you step into the water and jason thanks for the uh, question if you've got a question on the rules of golf send us an email from the short grass 
at gmail.com. That will do it for this edition of From the Short Grass. As always, thanks for listening. And if you get out on the course, make sure you stay hydrated. And always remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you soon from the short grass. You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.